Hi, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. And we're uh, trying to get into the festive spirit today with our goofy hats on. Um, if you want to learn more about the hats, there is a previous episode from last year. I believe it's called Holiday Hats, and you can find that in our video feed. I talk about these in more detail. Um, but today we're going to talk about another holiday thing, and that's our favorite holiday movies. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about the things that we are have to see each year in order to keep that spirit going for whatever reason, even if it's not necessarily a holiday film. Right. And um, we have our own favorites. Um, again, we always like to hear from you guys um, what your favorites are. We have some classics. We have some unusual things. Um, do you want to start with the first one we have here? Yes. Well, this one is very important to us because it was one of the first dates that Sarah and I ever went on in 2002 was to the movie About a Boy, which is a, a film starring Hugh Grant, uh, Tony Collette, uh, and then Rachel Weisz and a couple of other people. And it's not necessarily a holiday film. It does have a couple of holiday scenes in the film. Mm -hmm. And since 2002, every single Christmas Eve, we've watched it together. Yep. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, this is the far superior Hugh Grant holiday film. Um, I know Love Actually is a big hit with a lot of people. I kind of run hot and cold on that movie. It's it's a little bit too much of a downer in the downer places for me. And I know it's supposed to be sort of a, a realistic look at love or life or whatever it is. But um, I don't know. This one has a much more, co more cohesive story. Hugh Grant actually plays sort of himself, kind of a self-centered jerk. Um <laughs> And he kind of learns the true meaning of Christmas, but um, in a roundabout way. Um, well, he learns the true meaning of life right. in a roundabout way, but you can kind of turn that into a holiday kind of thing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Rick said, there there are a couple of um, Christmassy scenes in it, but it's not necessarily a Christmas movie. But I highly recommend it. Um, Toni Collette, actually, for me, steals the show. She is amazing. Um, she's amazing in everything I've ever seen her in, but she's especially good in this movie as the well-meaning but slightly misguided hippie mum. Okay, so we were talking about uh, Tony Collette there um, in About a Boy. Again, check it out if you haven't seen it. I'm sure you can get it somewhere. Um, and then the next one is a very naughty... <laughs> Christmas movie. It's Stephen Colbert's A Colbert Christmas from a few years ago, 2008 now. Oh wow, time really flies. <laughs> um, so this was back when he was doing the Colbert Report and this is done in his character of the conservative uh, pundit Stephen Colbert of the Colbert Report. Um, it's a send-up, it's a spoof of those cheesy holiday movies that were kind of put out in the I don't know, when, what era? Like the 70s, I guess they were really popular, where you had like, oh, look who dropped by. Hey, you know, it's this person. And yeah, and it's an <laughs> eclectic mix of uh, people, but mostly musicians. So you have John Legend, and you have Toby Keith, and you have Elvis Costello, and you got, uh, of course, Willie Nelson. Mm -hmm. Singing about <laughs> Willie Nelson's favorite uh, Christmassy herb. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Well, anyway. they do a song called Little Dealer Boy, so you can yeah. kind of get the gist of this is mm -hmm. this is adult content to some extent, but it's really great. Oh, I, I left out Feist. Feist is in this, oh, too. Oh, that's right. And she plays an angel. <laughs> <laughs> With that an angelic voice of hers. Yeah, it's a great movie. For me, it's really good. When I'm feeling kind of scroogey and like I have, you know, bitten off more than I can ch chew in terms of holiday preparations and I'm just not feeling it and I need to like get myself back in the mood. Um, because it takes the Mickey out of the commercial side of Christmas and the self-promotion side of Christmas, um, it helps me kind of recapture that and yeah. yeah, get back in the spirit of things. But yeah, speaking of getting a spirit of things, it does conclude with a, you know, all the musicians doing uh, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding, the mm -hmm. Nick Lowe song with you know, Elvis Costello made famous. And it's just, it really is hilarious, upbeat, and just kind of just one of our favorites. Here. Yeah, and has a good a good conclusion that you can get behind. Yeah. Absolutely. And that was a good segue. You mentioned you, when mm -hmm. you're feeling a bit scroogey, of course, the original Scrooge is from A Christmas Carol. And it has been a long tradition of ours to watch the 1938 version of A Christmas Carol uh, with Reginald Owens and uh, Gene Lockhart and Kathleen Lockhart, who were actually, they played the Cratchits and they were actually married in real life. And again, it's just good holiday 
watching viewing time. It is. This is kind of over the top, overacted of the period, um, but I absolutely love it. I don't think I had ever watched it straight through until you and I got together. Yeah. I'd seen clips from it. Um, yeah. Everybody seems to have a favorite version of the, the, the uh, Dickens classic. For me, it's the 1938 version. Some people like the 51 version. There's one that was done uh, in the 70s. And of course, there's a Muppet Christmas Carol, which mm -hmm. again, if you, that's another one. It is a classic. Yeah, that's a great one too. Again, if you're feeling a little grumpy around the holidays, watch the Muppets. They'll cheer you. Who can be <laughs> grumpy with the Muppets? Nobody. 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 You yeah. you better check your pulse. <laughs> that's right. Um, and then continuing the Scrooge theme, and we don't watch this one as uh, regularly as we do some of the other titles, um, but Scrooge, starring Bill Murray, was an updated, uh, the year on here, I think that's late 80s, I want to say. It's 1988, it's literally, this is the 30th yeah. year, I actually watched it in the theater in <laughs> 1988, and uh, it's... Um, it's one of those films that, like, actually like um, Groundhog Day, another Bill Murray mm. film, where the first time I didn't necessarily gr grab me, but with subsequent watchings, it, you really see the nuance that he puts into his characters and its star-studded cast with a really great kind of modern take on it. Carol mm -hmm. Kane is worth the price of admission as one of the angels. Oh, too. absolutely. <laughs> she's, she's incredible. Yeah, and it's Rick Moranis, right, who's the, like, the fired... Is that right? There are so many. I mean, it, He's the sort of the Cratchit character who gets fired from his job at, on Christmas Eve or something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There are just so <laughs> many little cameos from mm -hmm. a bunch of different people. Uh, and it's kind of set in a, in a television studio where they're producing the big holiday classic. And he's one of the executives. And I won't spoil it, but definitely watch it. It's a great Bill Murray film. Yeah. And I've been a massive Bill Murray fan. Um, I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe it was Ghostbusters, which I know he actually did reluctantly. I recently found out about that, um, but he didn't want to be in that film. Anyway, what, whatever it was, I've been a huge fan of his ever since I was a kid. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a great one. So Scrooged. that'll get you Scrooged on. Mm -hmm. And then we're back to another classic film, uh, Jimmy Stewart, It's a Wonderful Life. Another film that probably didn't do very well originally in the box office when it came out and has become a holiday classic. Probably once it entered the public domain type of situation, I think is what happened, mm -hmm. is that it then it got picked up by the television show, the television uh, channels in the 70s, and then it became more of a holiday classic than it had been in its original. Right. I'm not sure it ever went to the public domain, but I do think the rights got sold and it got re-released okay. or something that's, like that. Yeah, that's yeah. probably more accurate, but it was yeah. something that took almost 30 years before it actually became a holiday classic as we know it. Right. And you and I, to me, I think of that more as like a New Year's movie, like a fresh start, you know, mm -hmm. kind of looking back at the last year or the last few years and seeing how what direction your life's going in and all that. Um, well, that's also so we good. often watch it between Christmas and New Year's. But yeah. Well, also it's a long film, <laughs> <It's> long. <laughs> and I was saying is you know there are so many holiday classics and everybody has their favorites. If you tried to watch every film, you'd have to start before Thanksgiving before mm -hmm. if, in order to even get through all of the ones that are even considered classics. So yes, I agree with you. Watching that maybe on New Year's Eve, we're not big New Year's Eve revelers. We don't go out very often. If a friend is having a you know a dinner party or cocktail party. We'll do that, but mm -hmm. mostly we kind of sit home and be a little contemplative and, you know, enjoy each other's company. And again, we, we kind of focus on the previous year and what we hope to do in the next year. Right. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah, it's a Wonderful Life, and uh, and then you've got some animated films, um, and these are short, so you can get through a few of these in an evening. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Although I was saying, one of them on here is the Charlie Brown Christmas, which came out the year before I was born, and when I was little, it felt like it was as long as It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, Charlie Brown Christmas felt like it was a three-hour marathon. And now <laughs> it's like, it's 23 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything goes a little bit faster as you get older. Yeah. Well, I was mistakenly thinking that it had been, you know, padded out to the gills with commercials and stretched out to an hour. But you're right. It's just, it was a half-hour special. I think because it goes back and forth in tone between, like, the kids... You know, they're putting on a Christmas play, and that's kind of fun, and you've got all the jazz music, and then you've got these different scenes, and then you've got Charlie Brown on his own for a good stretch where he's trying to pick out that Christmas tree, and it's it's kind of a bummer for a little while, and I think as a little kid, you, you mm -hmm. know, your attention span isn't there, and... 
That's so true. that just feels like a long time, even though that's yeah, it's probably exactly around. why. But yeah, yeah just like the Grinch to me always felt like a really long one, but yeah. again, that's another short. But it also kind of shows some credit mm-hmm. to the the storytelling that both mm-hmm. of those people, whether it's Charles Schultz or it's uh, Doctor Zeus, the way the story, the pace of the story, kind of plays out, it really kind of you know keep sucks you in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and for me, The Grinch has a similar feeling um, to The Nightmare Before Christmas, um, in a way. It's that kind of, I don't know what to make of Christmas, and then I finally realize that it does have a special meaning. Um, oh, or Charlie Brown with that same thing. I mean, yeah, you know, they're exactly. They're all focused on the play, their commercialism, and it takes Linus to kind of really set everybody straight in that situation. Yep. And with uh, Grinch School Christmas, again, obviously, hearing mm-hmm. the Who's, uh, realize that it's just them being together makes their Christmas. So, yeah. Right. Yep. And the same thing with uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, um, which is a good one. I mean, I watch it around Halloween, usually, because um, it's it's Halloween Town versus Christmas Town. But um, I don't know. It is a good, it's a good start to the lead up to start thinking about Christmas, I guess. Yeah, I kind of added this to the list. It isn't something that we watch uh, habitually or, or annually on purpose, but it is something that I know that Sarah has always been fond of, um, especially the music, mm-hmm. And uh, but it's it's another good Christmas one. Yeah, I saw that in the theater and then I immediately ran out and got the soundtrack because I just thought the, the um, and I'm not even a big musical fan, to be honest with you. There's not very many of the classical, classic musicals that I really identify with or that, you know, that kind of stir my heartstrings. But this one, for some reason, it's, it's the misguided well-beingness of it all. But the, and then like the overlap between the creepy holiday and the one that's supposed to be the most festive. Um, there's something very compelling about it yeah. for me. So, yeah. The music is really good. So those are some of our favorites. That's mm-hmm. what our family watches. Uh, if We'd love to hear why you, if you watch something, why you watch it, what makes it special. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've left out some of the ones that we uh, we know people watch. Like people, there's some people who are diehard is their go-to Christmas film. Um, it's a good film. I'm just not really into the kind of violent films and I'd have a hard time kind of approaching a violent film as a Christmas film. Mm-hmm. But, it's very popular in the, in all around the world as far for a Christmas film. So, whatever gets you in the spirit, let us know. Yeah, let us know, especially if it is an unusual one or one that's not a classic uh, film. Um, we're always looking for suggestions on new things to watch, especially when we have a few extra days off between. Uh, you know, our work is. So leave a comment below or on the on the blog, and no matter what you celebrate or how you celebrate, hope you have a great holiday season. <laughs>